what? I'm just looking at you. Well, don't. Why, I can't even look at you? There's something I have to tell you, and I won't be able to do it if you're looking at me. <sighs> Sounds pretty bad. Yeah, well, it is. Really? You didn't answer any of my texts, so I dropped by Dr. Lord's house looking for you this morning. She told me to get lost. She didn't say it like that. Did you put her up to that? Are you breaking up with me? Langston's parents have been dead for a year and a half. Langston, our Langston. I don't believe this. Wait, I heard her talking to them on the cell phone. Cool, she made it all up. What? Why? What, what happened? What the hell happened? Her parents, they traveled around the world for a foundation that they worked for. They were on their way to the airport and they got in a major accident. And Langston found out she didn't know what to do, so she hid it. And I honestly don't know more than that because whenever I ask her too many questions, she just shuts down. Was she okay? My Aunt Dorian says her facing something like this is like lancing a boil. Does she always talk like that? My aunt's a doctor, what can I tell you? But she said that it's going to be hard for Langston, but this is the only way for her to feel better. Well, what can we do for her? That's a really good question. Oh, I guess you make her feel like nothing's going to change. Well, all she's got. We have to make her feel like everything's going to be okay. What do you mean you don't have an answer for me yet? But that was several hours ago. Byron, I am not happy, and you know what happens when I am not happy. No, I'm afraid I don't care that you and your colleagues are all overworked because of some merger. You know, what if I canceled that really fat retainer I pay you every month? How would that work for you? I want results. That's all that matters. Bertil! Someone's at the kitchen door. Please answer it. I'm on an important phone call. Sorry to... Be, oh, goodness gracious. Bertil... Maybe her name isn't Bertil. Uh, hello? Can somebody get the door, please? Now, Byron, by the end of today, I want to know what Langston Wilde's options are. It's... A young girl's life depends on this. Thank you. Oh, for goodness sake. <sighs> What? Oh. You think you got an idea on how to bring Marcy home? Let's hear it. I'm, I'm trying to think outside the box. Maybe it's not such a hot idea. Just say it, Rex. Right, the cops said the FBI is involved now. If we try my idea and it works, what's Marcy going to be walking into? And do we want that? Pennsylvania authorities have relinquished control of the search for author Marcy Walsh McBain and the baby boy she is accused of kidnapping. Pursuit of Mrs. McBain and the child has been turned over to the FBI. This all but guarantees a federal indictment for Mrs. McBain when she is captured. FBI sources have told WVL that locating the son of newspaper publisher Todd Manning has become a top priority along with filing federal kidnapping charges. Hey, against... stop talking that crap! Get that camera out of here, you're gonna be taking pictures out of your butt! God bless Roxy, I'll tell you that. At least I still have one friend in Lambeau. Do you hear what that reporter said? The FBI is running the show now. They're talking about you like you snatched some strangers, baby. Yeah. I did notice. Hey, you still have plenty of friends in Landview, okay? Friends that would understand if you explained to them that you 
We're out of your mind, and I'm sure Michael is out of his mind right Michael. now, wondering where you and the baby are. Michael made the situation, Ron. So now he just has to live with the consequences, okay? The feds are taking over now, which means Marcy's coming home whether she wants to or not. But if she comes home on her own, they might go easy on her. Yeah, but we don't know that, right? Right. Marcy's a wonderful mother who just lost her child in a custody battle. Come on, nobody's going to put her in jail. No. Bo and Nora wouldn't, but they aren't in charge anymore. And then there's Blair and Todd. You know they're going to be screaming in the sun for her to get the max. So what I hear you saying is there is no good way out of this situation. Marcy loses her freedom, and then we all lose Tommy. While I was thinking outside the box, I had one other idea. Shoot. What if instead of getting Marcy to come home, help her stay away? Why, Mr. Buchanan, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Come on in. Oh, this has been un jour d'enfer. Uh, since you don't speak French, I'll translate for you. A day from hell. Well, there's no blood, no broken bones. What are you talking about? You're upright, mobile, and you appear to be in charge of your faculties. I'm fine, thank you. Uh -huh. well, physically. That's what I came over to find out. I had to make sure you weren't trapped by a fallen bookcase or something. But I see that you're not, so I'll let you recover from your hellish day. Hey! Maybe I don't want to recover. Maybe I want to use all this nervous energy on something more fulfilling. What do you say? I say you're going to have to look elsewhere. This isn't about you, Marco. I'm not saying you're not into me anymore, but, you know, you just got some really bad news, so maybe you need some time to sort things out. I'm not breaking up with you. You're not? No. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I was trying to be understanding, but after what I just told you, I, I mean, I've never told any girl that I loved her before. I know. I've been lying to you since the first day we've met. I don't believe that. No, listen. It's true. Well, I knew you were sort of weird, but I decided I liked that about you. I think this goes into the category of more than just sort of weird. Wait, you don't lie. You call me out whenever I screw something up, and you own up to it when you do the same thing. That's with the little stuff, Marco. This is big. What, too big for us to get over? That's up to you. My parents didn't die yesterday. What? Let me finish. It's been over a year. What do you think of me now? I wish there was something I can do to help Langston. Well, when my dad died, it was like people got afraid of me. All my friends started backing off. Really? Why? I don't know. I guess they thought I was contagious or something. So I didn't just lose. My dad lost my friends, too. I'm so sorry. Well, if you'd have been there, you wouldn't have done that. Langston's gonna know that she has friends. Yeah, all two of them. I just wish that there was some way that we can help her instead of me just waiting around for her to open up. I mean, what if she stops talking again? As if. Well, sometimes you want to talk about it and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just want to forget it for a while. But the truth is out now, you know, so it won't be the same. I can't believe that happened to you. And now to Langston. I just you have your mom. Alright, no wonder why Langston freaked out. I still can't believe I, I didn't see what was going on. I mean, she, if I think about it, she always had an excuse why I couldn't sleep over. She never had a curfew and she never got in trouble by her parents. You would think that I would be like, wait, isn't there something weird going on? But it took my Aunt Dorian to figure that out. Hey. Come here. Give yourself a break. All right, nice is not alone anymore. But she will be soon. Who is by? You heard that, right? Yeah, I sure did. Brittany. See, there it is. What? The look on your face is the one I was afraid of. 
Well, I'm sorry. You sort of freaked me out. Half of the year ago. Longer. I'm telling you, it's the third time I've told it to anybody. So far, it's not getting any easier. So what about the rest of your family? My parents were both only children. My grandparents are dead. If that hadn't been for me, there wouldn't have been anyone to call. So all this time, you've been, like, living on your own? How did you do it? I had a roof over my head. I, there was enough money. I just... I kept telling myself that they were out there somewhere. How come things are different? I mean, why are you telling me now? I didn't want this big secret to come between us. There's another lie. As far as Aunt Dorian found out the truth, that she made me face reality. I had to tell Star and you. So can I ask you one question? Yeah. If Star's aunt hadn't figured things out, would you have ever said anything to me? And just who are you? Roxy Balsam, like the tree. Keep that tape rolling, because I got a lot to say here. Okay, I think this reporting is kind of misbalanced and unfair, and it stinks to boot. So if you want to know about Manning McBain's story, I got the goods. Go for it. Hi, I'm Roxy Balsam, and I am the proud owner of Foxy Roxy's Hair Haven. And if you come in and you say that you saw this interview, you can get $10 off on a double color process. Anyway, I want everybody to know that I am a good friend to Marcy and Michael McBain, and I'm also the babysitter. So I get a little steamed when a broad like this and a bad blazer and an equally bad attitude start treating my friends like they're criminals. And believe me, I've hung out with enough criminals, so I know that ain't them. Excuse me, you said that this was an interview, so that means I get to ask questions. Yeah, well, ask away, honey. <laughs> Michael McBain allegedly perjured himself on the stand at his adopted son's custody hearing. Marcy McBain ran off with the child after she lost custody. Are you saying that these aren't crimes? You know, I think you're being a little nitpicky about that. Hey, excuse me. I've just learned that you're the same Roxanne Balsam who was involved in the Buchanan baby switch nearly 25 years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, that was a long time ago and we got that all straightened okay, out. You said that you were little Tommy's babysitter. Are you also an accessory in the Big Bang kidnapping? Well, you know, the only thing I know about accessories is that they should all come with four-inch heels. So, uh, why don't you stop that camera and get out of here? Uh, what did you know about the kidnapping, and when did you find out? Oh, uh, you know, I thought I heard the lady ask you to leave. May I get your name, sir? Just identify me as the guy that's going to make sure she gets what she wants. Don't you think you'd be making a bad situation worse? Depends on your definition of bad, I guess. You really want to help Marcy get away with this? Just listen to me. If, if we can track her down and get a hold of her before the feds do, maybe we can get Marcy and Tommy out of the country. It's impossible. Wait, come on. You don't think the passport control's been notified about this? So it won't be easy, but if we can pull it off and, 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 and get her phony documents and, and land Marcy and Tommy in a, in a country without an extradition treaty. And that's a lot of ifs, Rex. But if we can do it, then Tommy ends up with the parents he's known and loved his whole life. Well, it's not the worst idea I've heard, but it's definitely in there. Well, what's wrong with it? I can say it in one word. Talk. Get the hell with him. It's fantasy, Rex. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Even if we could find Marcy and convince her to go along with this thing, it wouldn't work. Adriana's right. Todd's not going to stop looking for Tommy. He's not going to let the government stop looking either. And come on, Marcy and I, we're not the type of people who can live our life on the run. What kind of life is that for my son? What kind of a life is it with a nut job like Todd? Better than the one you're talking about. Look, I know that Marcy believes that she is protecting Tommy, but the truth of the matter is that she's putting him in danger. We have to find her, and we have to bring her home. Okay, it's your call. My call? Look, you, you said you had an idea. What is it? What are we gonna do? Oh, well, you said anything about we. 
I can set it up, but it's going to be up to you to make it work. Hey, listen, honey, don't mess with him. Because he's Natty's good friend, Miles Lawrence. Are you still rolling, Joe? V. Miles Lawrence, who is accused of abducting Todd Manning, the man who inherited Spencer Truman's entire estate. Did your guilty conscience lead you to disclose the whereabouts of Mr. Manning's son? Didn't you, in effect, set this whole kidnapping situation into motion? No. The, all the charges against me have been dropped. How do you feel now that Mr. Manning is still separated from his son? Is part of you glad? Hey, uh, you know, that wasn't exactly kidnapping, because Marcy and Michael, they adopted Tommy. But they wouldn't have been able to do that if he had disclosed what he knew. I reiterate, aren't you the person behind this whole situation? You know, you make it sound like I knew all this all along. Oh, sorry, sweetheart, but this is over. And who are you? Uh, someone who can give you a much better angle than... Hey, uh, hey, 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 such a cake hole. You know, this barracuda will eat you for lunch. Would you and your cameraman like to come with me? Sure. Well, I guess it's safe to say that uh, went exceptionally well. Yeah, except for the lipstick on my teeth. You're asking me what was more important, being straight with you or admitting the fact that my parents were never coming home. I would have kept on like I was. I know you don't like hearing that any more than I like saying it. But it is what it is. Oh, I get it. I do. I mean, when we first started hanging out during the play, I was giving you all that attitude. You didn't do anything wrong, okay? Well, then I caught you forging your parents' signatures on that permission slip. I should have kept my mouth shut. You told me that the way that I was living sucked. And you know what? You were right. Well, I thought you were sticking up for people that didn't give a crap about you. But it was way worse than that. I was lying to myself, to you and Star. I didn't know how to get out of it. Hey, what I don't get is... You're so tough. <laughs> my parents would go away on their little trips and they would say... You're gonna be alright, right, sweetie? And I knew what they wanted to hear. So I said it. They wanted a tough kid, so I was one. If you want to take off, I'll understand. Babe, I told you I loved you. And I'll never forget that. Nobody said that to me since my parents. But the thing is, I would have kept on lying to you forever to keep you saying that to me. I think I'm a mental case, don't you? I wanted to be close to someone, so I used you. I understand if you don't love me anymore. You're angry at me for missing dinner with you last night. I'm not angry that you missed dinner. I'm angry that you didn't bother to call to explain why. And then you try to charm your way out of it when I show up here. I see. Oh, Clint, how can you ever forgive me? What is that supposed to mean? It was a lapse. I mean, I stood you up for dinner, and then I had the temerity not to call you for, what, 24 whole hours. I, failing to, to check in with you, to let you know about my whereabouts, to grovel. Oh, you're in a great mood. <laughs> because that is what you really want. And a Apology. You know, maybe if I really were underneath a bookcase, you would overlook it. But, oh no. What could be going on in my little life that's more important than you are? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm talking about a two-minute phone call. No, you are talking about control, because you are like every other man on this oh, planet. No. Oh, oh, yes, oh, no. you go to bed with a woman, and you think, oh, oh you've now got to be the, the sun in her orbit. Don't you turn this into a feminist rant. I was worried about you. No, you weren't. Your nose was out of joint, so you came over here to put me in my place. No, I didn't. I was worried about you, but I'm not now. Now I'm mad. Oh, yes, and enjoying every second of it. <clears throat> what? is wrong with you you tell me 
You seem to have everything all figured out. Hey. Yeah. I'm still napping. Oh, thanks. Oh, hey, you, you know, do you have, um, you know, some kind of a, a cap, a baseball cap or something that I can borrow? Kind of get the feeling that every cop in the tri-state area is going to be looking for a chubby little redhead, so, um, Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey. What? What? Are you sure about this? Look, you had a baby? You would understand, okay? Well, if and when I decide you're right, I won't be able to tell you. I won't know where you are. Lonnie. Hey. Don't start with me. Look, you're my baby sister. Right, but I'll back you on any decision you think is best, but are you sure you're not just panicking right now? Panicking? You saw Todd Manning for yourself this morning. He ransacked your apartment. His goons strangled you half to death. If you had a son, would you just give up, Ron? Would you give up and would you let him raise him? But what about Michael? I don't care about Michael. But you're taking Tommy no. away from him, too. He lied to me. He lied to me, and he gave up on my family. So that's it. You're never going back to Landview. I am not going to let some convicted rapist raise my son. My son, Ronnie, he is the only child I am ever going to have. And I am not going to let him raise him. He, he tried to kill him. All right, and as far as Michael goes, I don't care about him anymore. Ron, I don't care what he thinks. I don't care what he believes. End of story. So let's stop talking about it. Fine. You can uh, pack the rest of your stuff. I'll keep my eye on the TV. Thank you. I'm here with Dr. Marcy, Michael Marcy. McBain, husband of fugitive Marcy McBain. Dr. McBain, is there something you'd like to say to your wife? Marcy, honey, wherever you are, I love you. I'm going to miss you so much. I'll call all the time. We'll email. I'll never forget you. Why don't you two take it to the Palace Hotel? Um, excuse me, this is a private moment? In a public place? Were you two eavesdropping on us? <sighs> like I care about anything you two have to say. Oh, please. Your whole last year was about messing with me. Come on. Let's get out of here. She's not worth it. Why did we have to pretend? We never did that before. I just got the 411. And I didn't want Dumb and Dumber to know. I know that look. It means something really bad's gonna happen to Star. What's my part? You don't have one. One little phone call and... I come out on top. So that's it? Hey, wait. Do you remember Chorus? Uh, Mrs. Finch? You and Mrs. Finch? We've been going out all this time, and you still don't know. You weren't in my class. I was in third grade, you were in second, but we were in the same school Chorus. I, I don't remember. Well, maybe you'll remember a dorky dude with glasses who read his mother dressing. Freakazoid? Oh my god, I was so mean to you. Well, let me finish. It didn't bother me. Because, see, if you were messing with me, it meant that you noticed me. And a lot of people didn't back then. We went through grade school together? Yeah. And then I went to a different middle school than you, and oh, that killed me. How come you didn't tell me this before? Well, I wanted you to see me as the guy that I am now. Then you don't know me at all. This just makes me like you even more. But see, that's me too. I see what you've been going through, and it makes me love you more. I'm not going anywhere. There's something I didn't say before because I was scared. I love you. You want me to tell you what's wrong with you? Sweetheart, there's nothing wrong with you. Dorian, you're a delight, an absolute walk on the beach. You know, I'm going to say something to you, and I hope you're not going to take it the wrong way. When I say that, I mean, I hope you're not going to think that I'm apologizing. Heaven forbid. I 
am working on something, something that is very important to me, and it is not working out the way I wanted it to work out. All right, what is it? I was going to tell you all about it. In fact, you were going to be my next phone call. <laughs> oh, darn the luck! I was the next phone call, I see. But you know something? Now I don't want to talk about it, and I especially do not want to talk about it to someone who barges into my house and, and, and has the presumption to assume that I am wrong and who presumes that I have to explain myself to him. Okay. I was not thrilled that being stood up. So I may not have been in the best of moods when I showed up. But when I walked in, I suddenly became the guy to blame. Why? Because I was the guy standing in front of you. Now, you're suffering from something. You're worried about it. And yet, I'm taking the brunt of it. Mm, that's your opinion. Dorian... We're going together. We have slept together. God forbid I should expect something from you, like a phone call. Or should I just be happy to be on your freaking to-do list? Of course. You're right. You can't mean that. You just said I was right. You are right. Maybe you and I, we can't pull this thing off. Hey, thanks for coming to my rescue. Oh, I think you could have handled her if I hadn't come along. Well, you know, now that I think about it, she was like putty in my hands. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so what are you doing here? I thought they set you up at the palace. Yeah, well, I've been sentenced to do some community service in Angel Square. Well, you can't get much more Angel Square than this place. Mm. Unless you were sitting right in the middle of it. Mm. So, uh... What you got in mind, mopping floors or uh, fixing up my animal trophies? Uh, no, actually, I, I don't think that's on my list. Well, why didn't they talk to me about the list? I mean, they should have talked to me because, you know, I'm practically the mayor ed of Angel Square. Oh, well, then, uh, then you would be the perfect person to ask for advice on my options. Well, sure, you help me with this thing. And you know what they say. No, actually, I, I don't know. A bird in the hand? Washes the other. <laughs> Marcy, come home, please. You, you and Tommy, you know, you, you're my life. I, I know that what I did is part of the reason that you're gone. But not knowing where you are, or if you and Tommy are okay, honey, it's killing me. I know that it's too early to talk about what's going to happen with us. I know the only thing on your mind right now is Tommy. But this is what's on my mind. I keep seeing you driving along, or hitching a ride, or on a bus or a train, and I keep seeing you looking over your shoulder, scared to death of what's going to happen to you and Tommy, because you're all alone. Honey, if anything ever happened to you or Tommy, I, I wouldn't want to live anymore. Please come home. Bring Tommy with you. We'll work this out. We'll get through this together. You know, I, I know it's it's never gonna be the same as it was before, but we can try. We can we can still be a family. Save us, Marcy. You're the only one that can. Oh, you're just determined to blow everything out of proportion today. You know, when I first started to handle this problem, the one I was telling you was so important to me and isn't working out the way I wanted it to, my every instinct told me to go solo. Well, that's fine. Just call me and tell me that. And I'm sure if the tables were reversed, you would have called me. Oh, yes, I would. Thank you very much. But if you hadn't, it would have been no biggie for me because I don't need to know where you are and what you're doing 24-7. That would really be too much information. No, it's not, Dorian. It's called having a relationship. I didn't call you, and I am very sorry. But you came over here in a really ugly mood, and I had to fight back. So you're telling me, oh, cowboy, it's not the end of the world. 
It isn't the fight that's the problem. The problem is, you seem to have these expectations of me. And I'm not sure I want that. I have these expectations because I love you. Oh. Oh, sorry, bad timing. No, it's okay. We're good. See, I told you that oh, everything was going to be... It's a loving. What, you follow us? Brittany, get out of here unless you want to start your new school with dentures. Oh, very much. Leonard must be giving you lessons. Leave her alone. Or maybe somebody's <sighs> slipping you steroids. Brittany, go pack. We're in the middle of something here, okay? And not say goodbye to all of you? You know, I really think I'm going to miss seeing you guys stumble off the short bus every day. Did you phone ahead to your new school so that they have the coffin full of Transylvanian soil already for you? You know, speaking of coffins, I think I'm going to miss you most, little orphan Lanny. And all the stories about your imaginary parents. Yeah, you were listening, huh? Just shut your mouth, Brittany. And let your little band of losers have the last word? I don't think so. Clean graffiti off the church. What are they kidding? That grows back the next day. Number two, community garden. Oh, that's wonderful if you love rats. Number three, community watch. You ever see that orange jacket? That doesn't go with nothing. And pushes hate the walkie-talkie. <laughs> you sound like you know a lot about the list. I do. I got my own list. And I owe them a couple of hours. You're Maybe we could do them together. You might tell me what you did to get community service? Oh, Rexy and I had a little arson scheme. An arson scheme? Yeah, you know, it wasn't anything. Like Sam Balsam. Hey, you see my newscast? <laughs> newscast? Jimmy Rams, the FBI. I'd like a word with you. You've just heard Dr. McBain begging for his wife Marcy to return to Landview with the little boy she believed was hers until yesterday. For those of you just tuning in, Mrs. McBain is accused of kidnapping the boy. If you go ahead with your plan, that may be the last time you ever get to see Michael, okay? Now, are you prepared to lose him forever? What do you think you're doing? It was nice knowing you, Britt. Have a safe trip. Lexi Wild, go. you're hurting me! Let go of that girl! Are you all right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for asking. Oh, please. You Langston Wilde? Yes. Why are you asking? My name is Mrs. Woodrow, and this is my associate, Mr. Owens. We're with Social Services. Social Services? We've been looking for you. You're going to have to come with us. Wow. I did not see that coming. You just said you love me. That's fighting dirty. I was trying to get your attention. It worked. This thing that you're uh, working on, this problem that you're struggling with, would you consider the possibility that it might be making you overreact? Yes, if you will consider the possibility that this relationship, and oh, I hate that word, that this relationship has become so full of, another word I hate, expectations that it's, it's, uh... It's what? It's... Too much for you that I'm asking you to call me? It's... It's just that we've come to this place without deciding that we wanted to be in this place. And I think... We need to do some thinking. Both of us. Hey, if you're talking about that bootleg Botox, I was nowhere near. Ma'am, I just flew in from D.C. I'm looking for a colleague of mine, Agent Warren. Has to do with McBain baby's kidnapping. Oh, yeah, Agent Warren, friend of Johnny McBain's. Oh, they're not here. They together? Yeah, they were talking. You know, a little strategy. Federal agent is helping Marcy McBain's brother-in-law. And why not? Well, it's a little matter of him being related to the fugitive. Thank you, ma'am. Did I say something wrong? What kind of look is this? 
Hey, Tom. Come on, give me a kiss, buddy. Mwah. Throw me a kiss. Throw me a kiss. Give me a throw me a kiss. Mwah. <laughs> We're going to go for a walk. Pumpkin. Let's get some fresh air. Oh, Anna. Why don't you come with us? No, I, I got to stay here, you know, in case Marcy calls or... I you know, she, she comes home. Right? Well, we won't be long. Hey, guys. You think it worked? I love her too, Mike. I hope so. I love Michael. And I will love him every day of my life. You know that. Then go home. No, if I go home, then I lose my son. Look, Ron, the bottom line is that right now Tommy is more important than Michael is. Okay? He has to be. Listen to me. When I first brought that beautiful boy home, I looked into his big brown eyes and I made a vow that for as long as I had him, he would come first. <sighs> okay. Okay. So what do you do now? Can I ask you to help Tommy and me disappear? Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live. On the next One Life to Live. How are you feeling, Lindsay? What's the deal with you and Sarah? If Antonio is the one, he is the one we will get you. I'm going to kill you for this! Watch weekdays on ABC, weeknights on Soap.